Welcome to Allies or Enemies. I'm Jess. And I am Sean. We are just back from Aircon, an awesome board game convention here in the UK, and we wanted to talk about our top 10 favorite new to us games that we played for the first time at Aircon. And we are also going to talk about these games, but in just a second. The great thing about Aircon is it's a convention where the main focus is all about playing board games. So there are some exhibitors and there's some stalls, but most of it is like open halls with big tables, a chance to meet some folks, borrow lots of games from the library, and, and spend three days playing games. On top of playing board games as well, there's also a ton of events, a ton of other things going on. Um, at the convention, and that was hosted by the team at Watch It Played this year, and they are just absolute class acts. Um, all of them across the board. We took part in a bunch of their events, like we played the games that they were hosting. We ran into them a few times in the lobby, and they were just so lovely and so nice, and they don't know us at all, um, but they were just wonderful. But there, like we said, a lot of things going on, and one of the things was a board game raffle. It was incredible. It was only a one hour window in which to get tickets for this raffle. And they raised over six, well, close to 6,000 pounds, all of it going to charity. And all of the games were donated by board game publishers and board game stores. And we ended up winning one of the tables that had something like 28 games. We'll put the list of it in the description as well as uh, who, who donated those for you to check out. And this is what we ended up bringing back with us. Yeah, so there were a few more. We ended up, we gave a few to other folks. Um, there we decided to share the wealth a little bit. And we traded a few um, that we already had for a few we didn't have to some of the folks at the other tables. And uh, it was, you can imagine our excitement. Um, and we just wanted to really quickly just show you a few of those games, talk about the ones we're really excited about. And if there's any of these that you're like, oh, we'd really like to see a, a review of that, so let us know in the comments as well. But one of them was Icky, which is just this really cool, it's a re-edition and it's um, it's a worker placement game set in, I think, feudal Japan. And we saw it on the tables. It looks beautiful. We're really excited about that one. And before we knew we won the raffle, there were a couple of games that we did purchase. And one of those is this one, Ganymede. We had a chance to play a quick game of it really liked it and picked it up. Uh, there was Mandala Stones, really cool looking abstract games with these beautiful beads on it. There's this uh, party game, Don't Get Got, so it looks fun to bring out at a party, give it a try. It's made by a Shut Up, Sit Down as well, and it's cool because it's little missions that you have to do during, it's like a literal at the party game. Um, Mercado de Lisboa, which is, you know, taking the Vitell Lacerda game Lisboa, and it's a little um, bit of that game. Obviously, we haven't played it yet, but we're excited about that one. This one, For Sale Autorama, it's uh, published by Eagle Griffin Games, and so looking forward to giving this a try. It is for three to six players, so we'll need a few more folks to play this one. Uh, we got Villagers, and this is another one we bought just before we got all of these games, but we're still very excited to have it because we loved Streets. This is one of the games that we entered the raffles in the first place is we were so excited to see this on the table because it is not available currently for purchase here in the UK. So when we won it, it was one of the first ones we cracked open. That is Horrified American Monsters. And then we've got uh, we got Tangaru here, really cool Pacific Island game. We got Solar Storm, which is a, a little kind of cube placement um, space game. We got a uh, Trial by Trolley, which don't know a lot about, but I think it's like a choose the best of two bad scenarios kind of situation. Uh, a couple other small boxes we got is Rolling Ranch, uh, a roll and write. We also have One Night Ultimate Werewolf over here, which we hadn't had a copy of, so good to have. And a Strike the Dice game, which is just a super fun warm up game. Yeah, and we're going to talk about Strike as well a little bit. Spoiler alert, but we had a lot of fun playing that. Um, we got uh, Labyrinth. I said it right. I always say Labyrinth, and I don't know why I <laughs> do it. Um, which is an old school game we've never played. Um, a lot of fun, it turns out. This is one we got in the Bring and Buy for £10, Sierra West. We've heard great things about it, and the designer is Johnny Pack, who did Merchant Scope. So uh, we thought we'd pick this up and give it a try. And then we got a couple of games from uh, Lucky Duck, and we we like the, the one that we've already got, um, Chronicles of Crime. The app um, integration is really good. 
So we got two of these, and I'm honestly I'm most excited for the uh, for the kids one here to save some wizards. Another one that we traded that we're looking forward to giving a try is Steampunk Rally, and this is scientists that build these cool contraptions and race them across the lands. Uh, and then we got Endangered with an Endangered, well, I showed those the wrong way around, but with an Endangered Expansion co-op game uh, about uh, saving animals. There was a really great uh, board game geek thing about this too, where they were like, I love the game, but I'm only, I can only give it a 5 out of 10 because so many tigers died and it made me sad. <laughs> and the, I love that and I can't wait to play it. And lastly, we have The Great Wall. So this is a game we've been looking into and we're thinking about purchasing before we ended up winning it. And now we got to take it home with us and give it a try. I'm really excited about this one. This is, this is the reason that we put our tickets in that table. Uh, and so that was, we just wanted to share that excitement because we are buzzing about it. And these shelves are going to be even more overloaded and the ones you can't see. But we want to talk about the games that we have played while we were at the convention. And there were a lot of just really great games. We, we, we played oodles of stuff, met oodles of new people. But let's start off with our number 10. And this is one of those ones. We talked about the, the convention and how they have the different events. And this was actually the first event that we took part in. And so we didn't quite play by the right rules, but uh, the rules we played, it was kind of a group game. It was really fun. And this was Wits and Wagers. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a game where a question gets asked and there's always a number answer. And the number is something that you would have no clue what would it be, like how many Skittles are in a package or something like that. And for this one, it was all board game related questions. And then as a team, you had to decide what your number was someone stands up there and then you vote for which one you want to put your meeple in for points. And I think one of the exciting things was this, was a chance to meet new people for this first event. And then we also ended up winning. So that was a bonus. Yeah, it was. And this is a game I'm not sure, because I, I can see how the regular game would play. And it was a couple of the Watch It um, played folks that were actually hosting it. Um, Rodney from Watch It played and Chaz. And they, they did a great job too. Um, and it, it was it was a really fun game how we played it like it was one that I almost feel like is better as a group game I wonder I'm interested now to play the actual board game just at somebody's house I don't think I'd run out and buy it but I had a lot of fun playing it would we'll definitely play it again yeah and our number nine was one we got from the library and it's one we've been wanting to try for a long time it is Burgle Bros so it is the original version that we tried and it's a cooperative game where you are sneaking through the floors, trying to avoid guards and lasers, and cracking open a safe. And I thought it worked really well as a co-op game. Yeah, I thought it was it was good. Um, it, it 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 was good because you're you know you're flipping over the tiles and you're kind of exploring it uh, as you move and you're moving the guard as well. I don't know what it was that didn't quite connect with me. But like it was another one that you know, I wasn't itching to run out and buy right after we played it. But again, I, I'd, I'd probably play it again. Uh, I think we were probably a little rushed when we played it too. It's not always fair when you play a game at a convention, but I do think it was worth checking out. I'd be actually really interested in checking out Burgle Bros 2, I think probably even more. Yeah. Uh, and then our number eight, this is one we played. We had a, a just a short kind of half hour to play a game. It was on the shelf right next to us. So we went for it. And that is Dream Home. And so Dream Home, you're building a home, you're flipping cards. It's really just straight card drafting, tableau building game. And you're putting rooms into your house. And I liked, I liked it. I liked, um, I thought it was really a really good production. I thought it looked really nice. I think we've just, we played so many weird games like Castle of Mad King Ludwig and that sort of game that having normal rooms was weird for me. And I wanted them to be like a little bit stranger, more fun. It just felt a little commonplace maybe. You had to be like, oh good, I've got two living rooms and two bedrooms and a garage, yay. <laughs> yeah, like you just have to build a sensible house, which actually is kind of outlandish now compared to most <laughs> board games. But building a sensible house felt weird to me, but it, it was fun and it was, uh, it was well put together, I thought. Our number seven was one of those mega events, one of the events hosted by Watch It Played, and there were over 40 people playing. So again, it's a little bit different than how you would normally play it, but it is Savannah Park. And in Savannah Park, you have tiles of different types of animals and watering holes, and you're trying to group like animals together in herds as by flipping them over, and you can only flip them over once. But the great way that they did it was bingo style, where 
they drew a tile and then would say it and everyone would look for it. And it got to the point where people were starting to like call out which tile they wanted drawn and they were like yeah. cheering if the right tile came out. And it was a super fun to play it like that. It was because I, I can picture that, well, the regular game is each person takes a turn being the one who chooses which tile you're going to flip over. So it's a lot more cutthroat where you're looking at like, okay, I need a, a rhinoceros watering hole and I know you don't want to flip that right now. So I'm going to call that for sure. Um, whereas this was just a lot more random and, and fun. Uh, and I, I really did appreciate that. But the game itself seemed seemed good. Like it's just a really quick, you know, explain it in three minutes kind of game. Um, that's I feel like we say this a lot, but a little bit of a roll and write without the rolling and writing. But it did feel a little bit like that, where you're just making quick choices. And then that leads to you know scoring and combos at the end. Our number six is, this is yet another one that we played in one of those big events, but this was really playing the actual game. This was more of a, a tournament um, style, and it is Strike. And Strike is a game that if you just told me the rules, I would be like, no, I, I don't think I would like that. Turns out I would really like it. It's just a matter of, there's like a little mini plastic coliseum. You've got a dice in the middle. You throw another dice in, and you want two of the dice that are currently in the Colosseum to match, then you take those out. And really it's, everyone starts with the same number of dice. When someone runs out of dice, they're gone until the last person still got dice. And, and it, le it leads for some really exciting moments because mm -hmm. you're taking all of the matches. So t sometimes if you hit the dice and some of them change, you might have four fours that you're taking and two threes. And so you take them all and it can lead to some huge shifts of going from like so few dice to all of a sudden a handful and then almost like a little narrative that forms with like people rooting for the underdog. <laughs> yeah, we really found ourselves cheering, like getting into the games of like the person who's got only two dice versus this person who's got like 17 dice. Uh, and we're like, oh, if they just get the one roll and they need the exact number and they get it and everyone uh, cheers and then they lose the next round anyway, inevitably. But super super fun um it was one of those like probably the, the experience as much as the game but now i'm keen to play that game more <laughs> it was a really fun spectator sport in that environment mm -hmm. our number five is rhino hero super battle uh, we have regular rhino hero so this one counts as a new to us one because it is the super battle version and it was great because in rhino hero you have or are going just straight up this one you're going across and up and the structure that we made, I felt like it was very impressive. We had so few cards left in terms of what we could put out. It was long, it was tall, the floors were all over the place. We had a lot of fun with it. I love that also true with the original Rhino Hero's Hero as well is that it starts as a competitive game and it becomes a cooperative game. That at the beginning you are kind of trying to screw over the other person, but as soon as you get to a certain height, you really want to continue to build it and to use every card. That becomes the game. And I, I ended up winning and I was like, oh, why didn't you get that? You were so sad. You knew what you won. I've never been so sad about winning in my life. And it's also that you're building it. And I felt like a little kid, like looking around at the other tables, like, do you see what we're making? Do you see? Do you see? Look at this. Look how great it is. No one was looking. But they, they should have been impressed. Yeah, it was very cool. Our number four is the Taverns of Typhonthal. And... This is a game that we've wanted to play for a while, and I honestly, I don't know why we haven't just picked it up yet, because we really like Quacks of Quedlinburg by the same designer, and we've always heard good things, and it was just top of our list uh, at the games library. We were happy when it was in there. It wasn't in there the first day. It was in there the second day. It turned out to be a really good game. It's cool because someone else at the, at the convention saw us trying to learn it and came over and taught it to us, which was very cool. Um, and we only played the base game, and even just the base game, it's just a solid deck builder where you're also building your pub at the same time. Yeah, and the way the pub builds out is really neat, and how all the pieces fit together, and the decisions you make in terms of what you upgrade and when. I really liked it, and I am super keen to try it with those other modules, because I've heard that adds a lot to it. Yeah, it is fun with the tavern, because you actually, you actually flip them when you do it, so you actually see it upgrading, which... I think it's a really nice, it's, it's a really nice touch and uh, yeah, it adds a little bit of like a, a touchy feely element to, to just a card game. And we made very different decisions with that as well. So that was interesting. We did. So that was our number four. 
Our number three was Ganymede, and we played this at one of the stalls. And it is really interesting. It's pretty simple in terms of its action selection. You pick a resource or a card, then you add that to your tableau. But then if it matches what some other symbols, you get to combo it in interesting ways. And the whole premise is you have these little meeples that are on Earth, and you need to try to bring them to Mars, then over to Ganymede. And you're trying to colonize Ganymede. And it plays so quickly. It's in the same world as Demeter, which is a roll and write we have. And we really enjoyed it. So we we purchased it. <laughs> yeah, we we played it once and thought, yep, we, we want some more of that. Because, yeah, it is. It's super simple, super quick, but it's got that... It's a really satisfying engine of you got to get the ones for your meeples, you got to get the ones to fly off of Earth, you got to get the cards to fly off of Mars, you got to get the cards that are your goal scoring. So there are kind of those those sprockets, those gears in the works, um, but they go really fast, which which I, I, I appreciate a lot. Our number two is, uh, this is another game that just blew us away. We played it, we were immediately like, all right, we're, we're getting that. We're ordering this. We played like a turn and we were like, we're getting that. And this is Manhattan Project Energy Empire. And like we said, a lot of these are new to us, slightly older games, but games that we are excited about. Um, and Manhattan Project Energy Empire is, again, it's built off of the Manhattan Project game, which we haven't played, but it's a game all about sustainable energy. And also not sustainable energy because I won just going with oil. Because what I learned is you can do a lot of oil, then you just clean it up. No problem. It was a good life lesson, I think. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to learn that, but it is a really interesting game of combining the theme with the mechanics and everything that you're doing does make sense. Like in order to get hydro, you need steel to build the dam, but you also need the research behind it. And so everything that you're paying kind of fits together. And then the, the resources themselves are great. I love the oil cans that yeah. are in it. It almost made me want to go into oil, but I decided to go <laughs> green energy only. Thought, why clean up the pollution? I won't have any at all, but that, that wasn't the way to go. Um, but it, everything in terms of the workers and, and how you put them out and the, the worker placement of it and the engine building all worked so well. And we thought, yep, we're, we have it on the way now. <laughs> yeah, it's just su such a good production. It really was an Alberta versus British Columbia. I was I was oil, 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 and she was all, I got to have that, that clean energy. What a sucker. <laughs> uh, but it, it does do a good job because if you get the, I guess, dirty energy, you're at a higher risk for more pollution, obviously. I, I just got lucky. I just need a little hydro. It goes a long way. <laughs> And then our number one is Horrified American Monster. So if you've been watching our channel, you maybe know that we love Horrified. It is one of our favorite cooperative games, and we've been so excited to try American Monsters. It hadn't been available here in the UK, so when we won in the raffle, it was one of the first ones we cracked open and we convinced a few other folks to play with us. And it was, it was so much fun. It has the very similar mechanics to the original Horrified in terms of you are you are people going around trying to collect these items to destroy these monsters in different ways. But I feel like they've introduced some some new elements to this version and it, it felt a little bit harder, but we also have only played it a couple times so far. Yeah, we've only ever played regular Horrified with two players or we've played two-handed. And this was with, you know, with five actual different humans. Um, and then we played again with four different different humans. And both times it came down to the very last card, which was, I think, really a sign of a good game. One we won, one we lost, but both of them could have won either way, and they came down to the very last turn. And yeah, the monsters are like Bigfoot and the Jersey Devil and Mothman and Chupacabra. we didn't Chupacabra. We didn't know all of them, but they still look cool. Like there's a cool kind of like uh, I don't know. He's like a goat yeti. I don't know a lot about him. He's the Ozark something. Uh, but they all played a, a little bit different, like like you said, and they did feel harder. And the board Bigfoot was great. hard. <laughs> Bigfoot was he should be though. He should be the toughest. He's he's the he's the big name. He's the name everyone comes for. Um, and he lived up to the hype. And yeah, what a what a great game. That was the one we won it. We immediately opened it. Found some people to play with, and it, all new people too. Yeah. People we never met before, and it was it was a really fun experience. And so those were our top 10 games that were new to us that we played at Aircon. So do let us know if you played any of them in the comments. We'd love to hear what you thought of them.
Yeah, and it was uh, if if you haven't been to Aircon, um, highly recommended. If you're in the UK, absolutely go. If if you're somewhere nearby, if you're on the continent, if you're in Europe, it's probably worth worth a channel over here. Uh, it really was a terrific three days, and I I just I heard nothing but good things from everyone else who was at it too. So just terrific stuff and uh thank you so much for watching and do let us know if there's any of those games we showed you at the beginning that you think you'd like to see a bit of a longer video about because we're excited to play them thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time